The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Charles Darwin changed how people view their lives and the world in general. If all life is the result of natural forces with no guiding hand, we're forced to wonder whether God exists anywhere other than in the minds of ignorant men. And if God doesn't exist, then who is qualified to say what is right and what is wrong? The very concept of morality is called into question. But if God does exist, His existence has huge implications for you and for me. For many people, the theory of evolution is not a theory but a fact. That was certainly the opinion of my college professor as he spent several class periods trying to explain that evolution, while often referred to as a theory, is in fact a fact not to be questioned. But is evolution a proven fact? Did we indeed come from a common primate ancestor? Are all scientists in agreement on this? And is all the evidence one-sided? On today's program, we're going to look at a small winged creature that powerfully challenges Darwin's thesis. And I'll also be offering you a special audio CD that presents further challenges to Darwin. Be sure to write down the phone number or our website that we'll be giving you so that you can receive this inspiring offer absolutely free of charge. We'll even pay for the shipping. So stay tuned as I'll be right back with today's program of Moths and Men. A warm welcome to all of you from those of us here at Tomorrow's World. On today's program, we'll call into question a theory that too many people have accepted as fact. We'll look at a lowly winged creature that seriously calls into question Darwin's thesis on evolution. The Pronuba moth, otherwise known as the yucca moth, is one of the most amazing creatures of the insect world but I doubt that most of you are familiar with this small insect and the way that it challenges Darwin. And as stated in the opening of this program, if evolution is false and God does exist, His existence carries with it serious considerations. Not only does it affect how we look at morality of right and wrong, but it also means that our physical existence may not be all there is. And if that is the case, it would do us well to consider how we live our lives. And it might not be wise to postpone considering this question. The pronuba moth and the yucca plant have a special relationship. As you can learn from a number of scientific sources, one cannot live without the other. Note this statement from such an authoritative source as the United States Department of Agriculture. One of the most extraordinary partnerships between an insect and the plant that it pollinates is that of the yucca and the yucca moth. They are so interdependent that one cannot live without the other. This is confirmed by the United States National Wildlife Foundation. Without the moths, the yucca plants would lose their only pollinators. And without the plants, the moths would lose their food source. Each depends on the other for survival. To further complicate the issue, there are different species of pronubas that only interact with different species of yucca plants. And each species depends upon the other for their very existence. The life cycle of this lowly creature is truly amazing. In the spring of the year, adults burst forth from their cocoons where they have laid dormant over the winter and are drawn toward the blossoming flowers of the yucca plants, where a male meets female and they mate. The males have then finished their purpose and die, but the females have a series of remarkable tasks to fulfill. The National Wildlife Federation explains it this way, a female moth visits flowers of a yucca plant and removes pollen from the plant's anthers. 
She uses special tentacles around her mouth to carry the clump of pollen to another flower on a different plant. After assuring that no other females have visited the flower, she deposits the pollen on the flower stigma, which fertilizes it. With this work done, she lays her eggs in the flower. When the eggs hatch, the fertilized flowers will have produced seeds and fruit for the caterpillars to eat. The caterpillars retreat to the soil to cocoon over winter, and the remaining uneaten plant seeds are dispersed by rodents. One can say that she has planned in advance for an amazing sequence of events. Not only does she place her eggs where they need to be for their food source, but she then pollinates the plant so it will produce the food for her future offspring. Are we to believe that this lowly moth understands pollination? Where in the course of her supposed evolution did she learn this behavior? And how is it that she has all the right equipment to perform these tasks? An egg-laying needle to pierce a hole at the base of the flower to lay her eggs, and enlarged tentacles and jaws by which she can collect the pollen. Now, I have no doubt scientists can tell us the exact size of the yucca moth's brain, if indeed it has one. But suffice it to say that it can't be very big. And how can she perform these tasks when she's never seen them carried out? Who instructed her to do this? The best we can offer is that she is working on instinct. In fact, instinct might be a too high-sounding term for moth behavior. But if evolution is true, when did such behavior evolve? And how did such behavior evolve? Think about it. These are no small questions. She doesn't reason this out. She is programmed this way, and one must wonder how this programming took place and how she came to possess the exact biological features that are essential to go along with this programming. As so often is the case, evolutionary biologists promote blind chance, but speak in terms of design, engineering, intelligence, as in this statement. In the course of its evolution, the yucca moth has developed specialized mouth organs that it uses to collect the yucca's pollen, packing and transporting the tacky substance under its head or chin. But note that there is no rational explanation as to how she developed such specialized mouth organs. Evolutionists don't like the term blind chance, but is this not what it is? If somehow these specialized mouth organs came to be through a genetic mutation, is that not blind chance? Why would just the right specialized features that are needed just happen to appear one day? How lucky is that? We'll further explore the dance between insect and plant, as well as look at how this should matter to you. But first I want to offer you a free audio CD, Does God Exist? Think about it. Can there be a more important question? You need to know the answer. You need to be able to prove this for yourself. And this compact disc, which we are offering to you absolutely free of charge, with no follow-up, will help you do so. It includes three Tomorrow's World programs. Does God exist? Seven proofs that God exists? And was Darwin wrong? So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio CD, Does God Exist? You can also order it online at our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. The 
the pronuba moth and the yucca plant present many challenging questions. In order to answer them, we must explain not only how this particular moth developed specialized mouth organs, but we must also explain the mystery of how this lowly moth knows what to do with these organs. A human being is born with hands, feet, and a host of other organs, but must learn over a period of time how to use them. Do we really believe the moth comes out of its cocoon and figures out what to do through a process of reasoning? If not, how does it do these things? At least some biologists are asking the right questions. Why does the moth come out on the night when the flowers bloom? Why does she do things in the right order? What tells her to carry pollen from one flower to another instead of pollinating the same flower? What prompts her to work so hard to drive home the pollen in just the right spot? Why don't the caterpillars eat all the seeds? They only eat about one in five. These are just a few of the questions that must go unanswered when we look for reasons in nature's order of things. It's difficult to imagine exactly how the pranuba moth somehow evolved, but let's try. According to evolution, an ancient ancestor worm dropped to the ground dug into the sand, spun a cocoon, grew into a larva, and on a special night broke forth from her temporary home into a winged creature when she was called forth by the strong scent of yucca plant flowers. But somehow she was different from all her peers. By a fortunate mutation, she was blessed with unusual mouth organs that allowed her to pick up something three times the size of her head. She was never taught what to do with this newly evolved equipment. In fact, no one ever taught her to fly, much less to collect pollen. And what would she do with pollen anyway, since she doesn't need at this stage in her life? Yet somehow she does everything just right. She collects the pollen from the yucca flowers, flies to another yucca plant, makes sure no other female has been there, lays her eggs exactly where they need to be, deposits the collected pollen where it is designed to be received, and finally she flies off to die. She never sees the results of her actions. Thus we have a pranuba moth supposedly evolving without any intelligent guidance. But there's another question without evolutionary evidence. Prior to such a mutation, or better yet, series of mutations, how did the yucca moth survive? And without this lowly moth, how did the yucca plant survive? These are not trivial questions. As explained in Desert USA, one cannot exist without the other. Yucca plants would not exist without the yucca moth and vice versa. In their biological partnership, the moth depends on the fruit of the yucca for the developing seeds that serve as the sole source of food for its larvae. Conversely, the yucca depends on the females of the moth species for the pollination of its flowers and the consequent production of fruit and seeds. Without the yucca elata, the tegaticula yuccacella would perish with the last of the existing generation. Without the moth, the yucca would expire with the end of the existing stands. The symbiotic relationship between the pronuba moth and the yucca plant is only one of many examples of interdependency that can be cited where one cannot exist without the other. The specialized mouth organs of this moth is only one of literally thousands, yes millions of specialized and amazing organs found in the so-called natural world. Notice this incredible admission from Francis Crick, the co-discoverer of DNA molecule structure. Biologists must constantly keep in mind that what they see was not designed, but rather evolved. My college biology professor was a staunch evolutionist, and we had a number of exchanges over the course of the class. He used every trick at his disposal to prove his point, and the word trick is no exaggeration. Only once was I able to get him to admit that he didn't have an answer to one of my questions. And I'll relate that story in a moment. 
But first, I want to remind you of our exciting and formative CD titled, Does God Exist? This audio CD not only aids you in the answer to the greatest question of all, but can strengthen your faith in the existence of an all-wise and all-intelligent Creator God. You need this evidence. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio CD, Does God Exist? You can also order this free CD on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. I'll be right back to give you the question that stumped my biology professor, so don't go away. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook. Watch us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Evolution may sound good on the surface, but if you analyze it carefully, it leaves many, many questions unanswered. One such question stumped my biology professor. He was trying to indoctrinate the class in evolution, and on one particular day, he described an experiment by scientists Stanley Miller and Harold C. Urey whereby they produced several amino acids in the laboratory by mixing together various chemicals and sending an electric circuit through them. Now this is important because proteins, which are the building blocks of all living creatures, are made by stringing together a series of 20 different amino acids in a meaningful way. Proteins make up our cells. Without them, you and I would not exist. In fact, nothing living would exist. A typical protein has something like 200 amino acids connected together in a sequence that makes sense, such as a sentence in a book. The Miller-Urey experiment was highly controlled, with just the right chemicals and the correct proportions to form these protein building blocks. The fact that they are never found in nature in the same way was not explained. At the time, I was woefully ignorant of the incredible complexity of life, but I could see that cells that make up our bodies are very complex structures. It turns out that they are far more complex than I could have ever imagined. But with my limited understanding at the time, I raised my hand and I asked how he could skip from a few amino acids to a full-blown cell. His reply was stunning. That's the biggest gap in evolution. But since we are here, we know that it must have been bridged. What I didn't reply at the time, but should have, was, Sir, we are not disputing the fact of our existence, but the facts of how we came to exist, and you are trying to convince us of something you admit you cannot explain. My friends, have you ever considered what it means if that gap can't be bridged? And frankly, that gap is far greater than most people imagine. The average person who has never studied the subject has no idea. For example, some estimate that there are as many as one million different protein types in the human body. The exact number no one knows. The single most common protein is collagen, which is made up of 1,055 amino acids strung together in a precise sequence. According to Bill Bryson in A Short History of Nearly Everything, but, and here's an obvious but crucial point, you don't make it. It makes itself spontaneously without direction, and this is where the unlikelihoods come in. The chances of a 1,055 sequence molecule like collagen spontaneously self-assembling are, frankly, nil. It just isn't going to happen. The field of mathematics explains the challenge. Even if collagen were a more typical protein with only 200 amino acids strung together, the odds of them coming together in a meaningful sequence by chance is one in 10 to the power of 260, or one chance and one with 260 zeros behind it. To understand the magnitude of this, Bryson points out, quote, that in itself is a larger number than all the atoms 
in the universe. Of course, we do not see proteins self-assembling. They are assembled by DNA, RNA, and various other molecular machines in the cell. Most people are woefully ignorant of the unbelievable complexity of the cell and the highly engineered molecular machines that bring it to life. And then there is the matter of a membrane to hold it all together. Without that, you have nothing. Just as the yucca plant and pronuba moth are interdependent, so is everything within the cell. Bryson explains the dilemma this way. As the physicist Paul Davies puts it, if everything needs everything else, how did the community of molecules ever arise in the first place? It is rather as if the ingredients in your kitchen somehow got together and baked themselves into a cake, but a cake that could moreover divide when necessary to produce more cakes. It is little wonder that we call it the miracle of life. It is also little wonder that we have barely begun to understand it. The mathematical odds against even one protein self-assembling is staggering beyond belief. While Mr. Bryson makes a vain attempt to explain that the impossible is possible, he seems to be in awe of just how complex the creation is, as shown from this quote on page 372. Every cell in nature is a thing of wonder. Even the simplest are far beyond the limits of human ingenuity. To build the most basic yeast cell, for example, you would have to miniaturize about the same number of components as are found in a Boeing 777 jetliner and fit them into a sphere just five microns across. Then somehow you would have to persuade that sphere to reproduce. But yeast cells are as nothing compared with human cells, which are not just more varied and complicated but vastly more fascinating because of the complex interactions. Yucca moth with its interdependent relationship to the yucca plant is a huge challenge to evolution. But the structure of the cells that make it up are infinitely larger obstacles presented by cellular biology. Proteins, whether bacterial, whether ones that make up moths, or whether the hundreds of thousands of different kinds that make us functioning beings Every single one is truly a miracle of design and function beyond our current understanding. It is only in the context of discoveries made over the last half century that we have begun to see just how incredibly complex life truly is. And unless the biological gap, a gap the size of the Grand Canyon, can be bridged, we would not exist. My biology professor admitted that this gap was, in effect, a minefield of impossible questions to answer. So why is it so difficult for some people to at least entertain the idea that there is an intelligent being behind life? Why is it that they can't see a creator behind creation, a designer behind design, and an engineer who brought the whole project together? Ancient King David didn't have the array of technologies we have today to explore the mysteries of life, but he did recognize design and intelligence behind life. He could look at the human body and marvel at its design. How marvelous are the designs of our hands and our feet? Consider that we have eyes that reveal color and shape and high-definition clarity. And then we have the liver, heart, lungs, kidneys, and much more. The internal structure and working of all these organs indicate intelligence rather than chance. Consider the marvelous physical differences between men and women and the amazing process of reproduction all the way from beginning to end. An evolutionist might counter that mankind is not the only one to reproduce sexually. Even the yucca moth has male and female. But exactly how did male and female develop in the first place? No matter where you start, whatever creature was supposedly the first to have male and female, they both had to start at the same time. One without the other would be worthless, and the reproductive process through sexual interaction would die before it got started. As Bill Bryson points out, 
In his book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, if this book has a lesson, it is that we are awfully lucky to be here, and by we I mean every living thing. To attain any kind of life in this universe of ours appears to be quite an achievement. As humans, we are doubly lucky, of course. We enjoy not only the privilege of existence, but also the singular ability to appreciate it. Or is there a different explanation than blind chance and luck? Maybe, just maybe, we are designed by an all-wise and caring Creator to be here for a grand purpose. King David could look at human life and declare the following as found in the book known as the Bible, Psalm 139 and verse 14, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. If you'd like to strengthen your faith in God, or if you need help proving the existence of God, all you have to do is call, click, or write to receive your free audio CD, Does God Exist? Call right now or go to our website at www.tomorrowsworld.org. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. The Yucca Moth presents a challenge to evolutionists. Trying to explain an amazing array of interdependent and marvelous creatures by way of natural processes is a fool's errand. No truer words were spoken than those found in the biblical book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1, where it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, I'm happy you could join us today. But be sure to come back again next week at the same time and station when Richard Ames, Wallace Smith, and I, along with guest presenter Rod McNair, will help you learn more about the very purpose of life, the path to real happiness, and the meaning of world events. See you next time right here at Tomorrow's World. To take advantage of today's free offer or view today's program now or anytime, go to tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.